two reasons why the female narcissist chose you. My name is Jared Mello, the wizard of radical self-respect and the shepherd of black sheep. If you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to the channel here and comment below what your thoughts are on this video. Can you identify with it? Or do you think you have something useful to add? Please do comment below. But in this video, I want to go over the two main reasons why the female narcissist chooses the partner she does. And this absolutely applies to lesbian relationships as well. The first reason why is often she finds somebody that is going to be receptive to her love bombing and is going to put her on the pedestal because of it and give her all sorts of attention, admiration, and acknowledgement. This is a steady stream of narcissistic supply that the female narcissist knows she can always fall back on. And granted, the guy has to have at least a couple things going for him to be that kind of person to begin with. Maybe he's attractive, maybe he has some resources, maybe it will be good for the female narcissist's image, but she has to find the guy or woman that's going to be susceptible to her love bombing and then put her on the pedestal so she can get narcissistic supply. And that's only a small part of the puzzle, though. The bigger part, and the reason why the relationships can last a long time is she needs to find somebody, and this is the second reason, she needs to find somebody that is going to put up with her BS no matter what it is. And when I say BS, what do I mean? I mean sometimes cheating, sometimes belittling, sometimes her hissy fits and temper tantrums, sometimes silent treatments, sometimes being extremely flaky, sometimes disappearing for a while, sometimes bad talking you in public or humiliating you, sometimes having financial double standards, whatever it is, you have to be willing to put up with all of that because if you weren't, the relationship would end pretty quickly. And granted, this also triggers the trauma bond, and that has to be understood as well. And often a person that becomes involved with a female narcissist, they had a narcissistic parent that conditioned them to associate the behaviors of a narcissist with love. So there is that too. But also, because the person's in a trauma bond, they become more likely to disrespect themselves and put up with her BS. The female narcissist, she needs somebody that she can control, that she can get to jump through all of her hoops. And when she says jump, she wants you to think how high and to say, how high must I jump? And because the person has put her on a pedestal, they become much easier to control. And she might also threaten to leave. She might threaten to abandon him. Often they have a go-to manipulation tactic that when push comes to shove, she will pull out that manipulation tactic and the guy will comply. Maybe it's sex, maybe it's big emotions and she'll throw a mad temper tantrum and the guy becomes afraid to tell her no or afraid to stand up to her because maybe he's a people pleaser, maybe he's a little codependent, or maybe he's just afraid to be alone and he thinks he can't do any better. So he's willing to put up with her BS because often the female narcissist is a very pretty woman and Often it can be the prettiest woman the guy or the woman has ever been with, and it makes them more hesitant to leave. This is just something that I've seen. But they need to be able to control this person because if the person just leaves on them, then the female narcissist is left in a bad spot where she's got to find a new source of supply, a new main source of supply. And the issue with a female narcissist is she can have a main source, but she's always going to be open to new sources of supply in that relationship as well. If she thinks she can cheat and get away with it, she has no problems doing so. But if you're the person who was with a female narcissist and you're beginning to recognize some of these behaviors, it is of the utmost importance to practice radical self-respect. In case you didn't know, that's what brought me to my journey of continuing to talk about narcissism and partially this YouTube channel to begin with. But when I dated a female covert narcissist, I asked myself the question, 
What could I have done to prevent this situation? And the answer I came up with was practice radical self-respect. And why do I say that would have made a huge difference? I say that because when she was being flaky and lying to me, disappearing from time to time, blowing me off, giving me the runaround, if I was practicing radical self-respect, I never would have tolerated any of that. And that's why the female narcissist has to find somebody that's going to disrespect themselves and put up with her BS. Because if they didn't, the relationship would end pretty quickly. But often they have a sixth sense for the kind of person that maybe is afraid to be alone or afraid to stand up for themselves and tell her no. And they pick up on that and they hone in on it. And they might have to find a certain manipulation tactic, a go-to, that ultimately works. But whatever it is, they find one. And between that and the trauma bond, it's enough to keep these relationships going for a long time. And often, maybe she'll use sex as her go-to. And again, like I said, the girl, the woman, is often pretty attractive. And that sex card can be pretty powerful to a lot of people. And for a lot of people who weren't successful in dating before her, it is even more powerful because they're afraid to go back to unsuccessful dating again. All of these things combined, they keep people in toxic relationships. But that's why I say it's so important to put radical self-respect over everything. The best narcissist repellent is to practice radical self-respect in our lives because there is nothing a narcissist can't stand more than someone who tells them no and stands up to them and won't put up with their BS. It is impossible for a relationship to last a long time with a narcissist without somebody, the other person, disrespecting themselves in some way. Because that's the situation that they put you in. They put you in these situations where you have to disrespect yourself or you wouldn't be able to continue the relationship. And granted, the trauma bond is a part of this. But when I asked myself that question, what could I have done better? I am so glad I came up with practicing radical self-respect because that concept has completely changed my life. And I practice this in every area of life. And now, to me, it is second nature to do this in relationships. And my goal for people when I coach them is to get them to a position where they can hardly even imagine they put up with half of the BS that they did. Because now, how they would be now, they would never put up with it. They just wouldn't even dream of putting up with some of the stuff that they used to put up with. And this is what I do for women too. Whoever's been dealing with a narcissistic person, my goal for them is to help them practice radical self-respect so that they would never even dream of tolerating the kinds of behaviors they tolerated. And granted, there is the frog in the boiling pot analogy of abuse here too, where the temperature can get turned up and people don't notice it. This is also true. But once we're out of the relationship, we don't have that excuse anymore. We don't have that rationalization, I should call it. But once we're out, then there is no excuse for us to not practice radical self-respect. There is no excuse for us to not see the toxic behaviors and to have some self-awareness of ourselves and the people that we're dating. There is no more excuses so that we have to see it. And when we practice it, eventually it will become second nature. So that if, say, a female narcissist goes on a big hissy fit and has big emotions, and you notice, oh, okay, she's trying to manipulate me to comply, and she's using these big emotions to intimidate me or to scare me, or she's going to make me think that she's threatening to leave, and if I don't comply, she's going to leave. Those are all manipulation tactics so that when we practice radical self-respect, we would see through those and would say, you know what? No, I'm going to do what's best for me. I'm going to practice radical self-respect and I'm going to have my boundaries and I'm not going to let other people disrespect me and talk down to me. 
And when we do this, a magical thing happens. We no longer put up with BS. And part of it also is becoming happy and single. That's a big part of it too. Having a life that we enjoy outside of a romantic relationship. And this is one of the things a female narcissist and a male narcissist too, for that matter, they do enjoy isolating people from their friends and family. And I'm going to make a reel soon about why they do that because there are specific reasons why they do. But when they isolate you, then they have you all to themselves. And whatever life that you had or didn't have can be a distant memory at that point. But when we have a full life without them, that also really helps. But keep your eyes open because when you see these behaviors from a female narcissist and they're looking for the person that's going to put them on a pedestal and looking for the person that is going to disrespect themselves and put up with their BS, those are the two requirements because if you don't do that, they will not stick around. But granted, that's the wrong way to look at it. The right way to look at it is when we practice radical self-respect, we wouldn't deal with them anyway. We wouldn't put up with their BS and we wouldn't allow them to treat us the way they did because either we would place a boundary or we would just get out of there when they can't respect the boundary, which of course is usually what happens. They can't respect the boundary and they give us no choice but to get the heck out of there. But I can't stress this enough. Radical self-respect is the antidote to dealing with narcissistic people. And this is for every area of life. Practicing radical self-respect is like a guardrail to protect ourselves. And maybe we're not too well versed yet on understanding narcissists and their behavior. That's okay. But practicing radical self-respect can make up for that and it will protect us anyway. But if you got this far, please remember to like the video if you liked it. Share this video with somebody else that you think might benefit. And again, none of this is to judge anyone who has been with a female narcissist. I have been with a female narcissist. But I also care about the audience enough to keep it real with them. I'm not trying to be brutal with them, but I do want to be honest and to tell them that, yeah, practicing radical self-respect is something that most of us could have done better outside of the trauma bond, of course, but practicing radical self-respect can protect us. And when I say the shepherd of black sheep in my intro, that's what I mean. I mean that I want to help protect and guide the people to follow me here. To me, that is a responsibility that I take very seriously. And it's kind of like masculine containment for my audience, where I want to see them have the best results they possibly can. And I want to guide them to help them achieve those results. And I want to take responsibility for helping them. And that's why I think it's only so good to emphasize the victim, victim, victim part. And yes, Someone can be a victim, but there is also a difference between being a victim and then playing the victim. Playing the victim is when someone does that to manipulate or to avoid accountability. Being a victim is a different story. But I want people to take personal responsibility, extreme ownership, as Jocko Willink would say, the former Navy SEAL, or maybe they say Navy SEALs are always Navy SEALs, but regardless... I want them to have the best results and I'm going to keep it real with them in not a brutal way, but in a way that I want you all to have the best results. So I'm going to tell you what's worked for me. Practicing radical self-respect has worked for me and chances are it can protect you as well from having these kinds of people in your life. And once you learn how to practice radical self-respect, your life will be so much more peaceful because sometimes just eliminating toxic people from our lives can have a profound effect. And I think also they can actually weigh us down and they keep us from getting to the next level of life or getting the next great opportunity. But we cut them loose and then all of a sudden we can soar a little bit. And I've seen this happen. But again, 
If you got this far, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and comment below your thoughts on this video. Can you relate to this? Do you have anything to add? Don't hesitate to comment below and share this video with others that you think might benefit.